was the most challenging and difficult to produce and why? Say it together with me all now. Grand, Grand Slam. Slam. Oh. <laughs> You, it's unanimous. I why that was. We just put very high expectations on ourselves. But that was great. We came up with something really amazing, but, gee, it was hard work. I remember thinking, yeah. yeah, this is hard. The classic syndrome of when you've got a really huge album, like a massive record, and then you have to follow it. So the big album means you've arrived as a band. Everyone's waiting for the follow-up. And I think you want to make something that's even better. And I think we put a lot of creative thought into this record, like, I think the heart was hard because we actually were probably more producers than band in some ways with that record. Like there's so many songs which sound so different to one another. And also the difficulty of the underlying pressure. Is this going to be as good? Is it going to be received as well? There's a lot of stress in those early days when you're just starting to make it big or whatever. I mean, we went in a bit underprepared too because all the other records we just played them live and then just appeared in the studio and recorded them. But that one was very much we were writing in the studio and we were a bit, uh, yeah, burnt out from touring and a bit underprepared. But um, I think we did a pretty good job considering. I think, too, a contributing factor was um, it was like every record or every phase, stage that we got through in the seven years up to leading up to Ivy, everything had slowly improved and gotten bigger and, had, you know, increased. And then Ivy was so successful, there was that pressure of it, it would, be, would have been a lot, like way easier for it to do, not do as well as Ivy than it was to do as good, if not better, than Ivy. So there was a lot of pressure there. Yeah, but we also weren't, we weren't living anywhere either. We were just living out of the hotel. And it went for a long period of time. It went for about, I think it was about four, four months or something, as opposed to Ivy was recorded in two weeks. Mm. So it was kind of like, oh, and then we came, we had, some time to kind of stew on Ivy and then we went back and did the other stuff which mixed in with the record made it what it was, whereas um, Grand Slam was kind of a solid on and off block of four months. There was no kind of going home to kind of recharge your batteries and just mm. relax every now and again. I, I remember it feeling like Groundhog Day and it was hard to get sort of perspective on the work. There was no escape from that album. It just literally had to. I just remember Janet being so stressed and pissed off <laughs> and just yelling at me to get these fucking lyrics finished. And we were writing Glock and Pop, one of the most joyous songs I've ever written. And we just used to go running because we were staying on this top floor, beautiful apartment in this hotel around the corner from Q Studios. And Wit, Wit would run at night. And so he'd come back from his run and we'd be like, and be this anger. And so he'd just go for another run. Um, that was my way of coping was to get yeah. out and just but down to the opera house. I remember doing things like constantly cutting my hair, like it was long at the beginning of it, and just every few days I'd just have to go and like keep cutting or dyeing it or just doing it. It was like self-care stuff. It's oh, funny it? how some revelations can come out of that sort of pressure. Like I was reading, I've been listening to a lot of early U2 lately and um, before they went sort of to America, and that's the way October was made. Like he didn't even, he'd lost his, he had all these lyrics and, it, and they got left in a cab and the record company's like, you have to get this record made, we have to do it. They, were, they didn't live anywhere, they are in the middle of a tour and all of this emotion came out on that record. It's one of my favourite albums of theirs, stuff about Bono's mom and their whole religious feelings and the sense of like, the emptiness of rock and roll and show business. And it's funny, like, I, I probably would say we probably wouldn't like to make a record like that again, but it's interesting how good things can come out of bad situations or difficult, stressful situations. I mean, Glock and Pop is a classic example. The emotional experience of making it <laughs> and the emotional experience of listening to it are kind of polarised. It's so colourful and light and varied and eclectic and pretty hi-fi. Sound, yeah. but recording it seemed pretty, yeah, stress, same, clinical, maybe a bit unprepared. Yeah, it kind of made me feel like thinking about doing this new record that we're, the Janet record that we're just about to release and then doing a new album of our own new material. Listening back to Grand Slam after all these years, it almost makes me think, oh, we could make a record in any, any circumstances apart from like hating each other's guts, but we never really ever got to that phase. Even though it was stressful, I seem to remember us having a lot of fun together. Maybe it wasn't, the antagonism wasn't to do with each other, it was to do with our situation. 